Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at the latest release snapshot of Farron OS. I haven't looked at Farron OS in a little bit, and so it'd be good to go ahead and see what type of developments they're doing. Some of the developments, I'm pleased to say, are absolutely amazing, and some of them, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. So we'll kind of break these down. Of course, if you follow my channel, you know that uh, I am fairly non-nonsense. I'm going to tell you what my thought is, and you can agree with my thoughts or disagree with my thoughts, and uh, that's the case. Overall, I still think Farron is an excellent distribution, particularly if you're switching over from Windows into Farron, then uh, that's always a good approach. And a lot of the choices that they make at Farron are absolutely incredible, including some excellent privacy choices that are on here as well. So these are all really good. Um, there's a few things that I would probably do a little bit different, but um, I'll explain what those might be and, and why. But for the most part, this is absolutely an excellent and amazing distribution snapshot. Now this one here is basically just a iterative improvements. Uh, some of the, there's not a whole ton here. And if I had done the last fair and snapshot, I might give this one a pass, but I haven't looked at it for a little bit. So let's just break down what is updating in here. Uh, first, he does have a note here. If you're trying to update, there might be an issue with, um, the SSL, so he has instructions here. So go ahead and check the release announcement for information if you're having difficulties updating. He says he's abandoning the snapshot terminology. Sorry, Farron, I did use it in the beginning, uh, but he's doing the year and month uh, as the new. So this one is Farron OS 2021.10, hence, you know, October 2021. Anyway, uh, that is the original callback to the original naming, which is good. He does have some new wallpapers in here, and he is phasing out some old wallpapers, which he has explained. There is a new splash screen, which is very nice. This is one of the great things about Farron is so much attention to detail on even the little things, which is one of the things that just makes it such a great distribution. Zorin also is pretty good at this. Ubuntu is pretty good at this. So these are all really nice things. Uh, Deepin is the other good one. They do have a new lock screen. Some of this is a redesign trying to merge everything back together in one, which is going to be something going to be finally and fully released in uh, a little bit of time. Now, the thing I'm most excited about and why I wanted to have a look at this is the Firefox Web Browser Manager. There is a configuration tool. Now, if you can actually use this, I don't know how and haven't been able to figure it out. But the default configurations that he does when you install Firefox fresh and use it, this does not apply, and he has this the notes in, in the notes here. This does not apply if you're migrating in your old Firefox profile so it doesn't accidentally overwrite a profile. But if it's a brand new Firefox install, these are the things that he's going to do. Some of these are just personal preference items. Some of these are absolutely incredible for the privacy mode, especially since Firefox is becoming Firefox. So um, none of the stories and stuff in the new tabs, no pocket by default. Uh, the telemetry values are turned off, including the ones you cannot easily change via settings, uh, which I think he's also disabled the um, the Firefox uh, search that I had talked about in my recent Firefox video. I did not see any of the options there, and I know and I did not include it in the video, but there, it is possible to disable all of that stuff in the About Config. He probably did that as well. Home button is now on the toolbar, skipping the welcome screens. I did notice that DNS over HTTPS is disabled, and I did not get a prompt about that. So that's all good stuff. So I really think that the default install of Firefox is top notch. Again, Firefox, as bad of choices as it's making, I still got to use it from time to time because the other alternative is Chrome. Um, and I don't want to do that. And so I really, this is absolutely the best selling point to use uh, Farron because the default Firefox configuration is really good. It's really hardened. So, and then there's just a few other tiny things. Um, now I did notice some things with the theming and such that I'm not a huge fan of. Let's go ahead and talk about those here in a bit. But before we do anything else, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and just have a brief look at the installation process of this guy here. So we're going to go ahead and, um, we can try it without installing and we can install it. So we're just going to go ahead and boot up the, um, uh, 
boot up the try without installing it. It's going to go through a brief system check. And then we have our installation. Now, the installation uses the Calamaris installer, and it was very nice in that now Farron sets up as sort of like an OEM type. You install everything without localities, without keyboard layouts, without usernames, without any of that type of stuff. And then on first boot, then you go through and you set all of that such stuff up. And that is a really good way, particularly for those of us that are the the geeky Linux guys that are creating a, um, uh, we're going to be creating a, uh, a build for somebody where we can just set it up in OEM, hand them the computer, they take it home, they plug it in, and then they can set all their accounts and things like that. So just looking at the brief tour, um, it does detect we are in a virtual machine and gives you the options to install guest editions for VirtualBox or VM tools for VMware. So that's nice. We can transfer tools from Microsoft Windows. So if you happen to have some transfer tool options, you have those. Um, this is the installing Farron OS. You can install extra codecs here. And each of these, it does tell you where you can actually go to and install them as well. So uh, these are all options. Um, we have the theming. The theming is what I'm not a huge fan of. He went with like this. It look, I mean, from the pictures I've seen, I have not experimented with Windows 11, and I'm not in any hurry to do so. But it does have a Windows 11-esque look to it. Uh, there is the tablet mode and the desktop mode, which... I can't really tell any of the specific differences off the top, but those are the only options we have. Maybe I'm confusing this with Zorin, which I know still does this, but I thought Farron had some other options by which you could use a, a couple different layouts. You can still do that in the theming options. I'll show you that in a little bit, um, but those are the basics we have. Here's using the desktop application menu, uh, window management such, and then the using the system tray. So there's just a few other options we have here. The Farron OS store, we're going to get into that when we have a look at it. Here's your theming modes, and then you can choose your accent colors as well. You can connect your Android device, and I like that they have the link to the Google Play and the F-Droid option for those that are not into the Google thing. And then we can reduce eye strain at night. So those are the options that we have. Now under the installation, as I said, it is the Calamaris installer. So here on the installer, we're going to start with selecting our language. Of course, we're going to, you know, defaults British English because, you know, America is no longer a world player. We can replace partition, erase disk, manual partitioning. We're going to go ahead and erase the old disk and then hit your installation. Hit your install now option. And at this point in time, it's going to install everything and then finish and reboot. There is no selecting your localities. There is, uh, there's no selecting of your username, password, or any of that type of stuff. And then once it is installed, then you have to restart it. And then you will jump in and give it your basic information. So once the installation is done, now we come back here and it does default to select the language we started with. Now we can do our time zone selection, do our keyboard layouts, and this is where you are going to enter your user account. Finish setup, and then it's going to configure all the localities, and then it's going to start back up again, and then we're going to have the option to go through the welcome tour. We're not going to look at that again because we've already looked at that on the earlier installation. Nothing else is specifically different there. So once it is done doing our locales, then we'll be right back. Now the system is rebooting. Now we have the option to log back in. It is using LightDM as the login manager. And of course, Farron OS is based on the Plasma desktop. Now, as far as Plasma desktop itself, um, well, it was on my list of the top, and I don't know, maybe it still is. But after I've been using Plasma actively as my work computer, I can say it's starting to annoy me a little bit. So I'm not a huge fan of Plasma these days. Um, I don't think that that's a, a negative for this because uh, what else are you going to use? Gnome. I'd rather use Plasma than that. It's just some of the weird little quirky things of Plasma are a little bit on the annoying part. However, that being said, um, overall, it's not bad. And that's not a, a knock on Farron at all. Um, but um, overall, 
this is uh, this is what we get. So as I said, the Windows 11 type layout, I am not a fan of this. I don't like the task icons pinned to the desktop in any way, shape, or form. Never have. I find them to be uh, very unusable. They get in the way. And now you put them in the middle. It's like, what are you trying to do? Duplicate Mac? I don't know. Uh, but that's what the Windows world is doing. So that's what everyone tries to do. Um, now, if you want to change your theme layouts, though, uh, you go into your desktop layouts under your themes. Uh, this is just your basic settings. Your breeze gets you kind of the, the default plasma layout. So this one, of course, still uses the pins. The classic layout will give you more of a, a more traditional with your um, uh, here with your uh, individual launch buttons instead of pinning things to the taskbar. So we have a lot of different options in here. Everyone likes mac and cheese. So let's have a look at what mac and cheese looks like because I don't even know. Oh, okay, it's basically mac. Gotcha. Okay, so I guess we have mac and cheese now. There you have it. So back on my pre-installed where I did most of my earlier testing on, let's go ahead and walk through a lot of the big positives and negatives. Of course, if you didn't already know, Farron OS is based on Ubuntu. But one of the great things that he did is he did remove Snap. So if you were to go into your terminal and type in your Snap list, which would usually show you a list of snaps, you can see command is not found. That's because SnapD is not installed. I actually really like that. However, what he did do is he replaced that with flat packs. Well, I like flat packs better. I would still prefer to only use them as a last resort. So one of the downsides that I saw is when you use the um, the very easy to use uh, web browser manager, which has always been an excellent tool on Farron OS to go ahead and install a variety of different web browsers. And they have a lot. They have um, Vivaldi, which is their default, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Brave, Opera, Waterfox, Falcon, and Gnome. Um, the Firefox actually installs as a flat pack, you can see here. And so really the the it seems as though he's doing some flat pack by default. I don't know exactly what all is going to be flat pack by default, but I don't like systems that want to default to using an externally packaged platform. A lot of the reason is, I'm sorry, can we get this through our heads that we don't always want the absolute latest version of absolutely everything, which is a separate item from having security updates. Now, unfortunately, something like Firefox, it doesn't really matter. Your security updates are the latest versions. But still, when you're defaulting to Flatpak first, that does raise some concerns with those of us that don't want surprises when we turn on our computers to do work. And so to see the Flatpak by default on Firefox is a little bit concerning to me. Um, that being said, though, that's evenly balanced with Firefox having a lot of your telemetry stripped out and a lot of the, uh, the basic hardened configurations built by default. So I have not changed this at all so you guys can get a chance to see what this looks like um, when you first install it fresh. Once again, this will not work if you have imported a... Uh, an old profile from a different computer, but this is just a raw default from installing it. And even the Flatpak version, you see it is the Flatpak version. And if you look down through network settings, you'll see DNS over HTTPS is disabled, but I could select it if I wanted to. So that's a much better option. We have uh, the configurations. You can see that Pocket is disabled, Recent Activity is disabled, Snippets, uh, Tips and News from Mozilla and Firefox are disabled. Under Search, we still have the newer views with Google as the default. Maybe we should switch. No, don't do that. Maybe we should switch that to something like DuckDuckGo for more privacy. But we are moving in a better direction. And then we're using some, some custom layouts where we're blocking what to block. We're blocking uh, cross-site tracking cookies. We're tracking content in all windows. We're tracking uh, fingerprinters and crypto miners. And then it is asking to save logins or passwords. It is auto-filling things. Probably better to not do that, but that's okay. Easy to change. So you can see that they've actually done quite a bit. Now, I did not see this as a section where I would actually see the Firefox suggest things in there as well, which I don't see any of those leading me to believe that either the version of Flatpak does not have that 
or he disabled that as well. So I'm either way, I'm happy to see that. So here is your, your default Firefox. So that is a really good design choice. So as far as the basic applications that we get, it's not overly bloated. We have Krita, uh, mostly a lot of K applications. We do have Geary, which I've never cared for at all. Um, but, you know, we can install other things as well. Firefox is the only application I installed separately. Vivaldi is your default. Some people might have a problem with Vivaldi as a default uh, because it does contain some closed source propriety code. But overall, what are you going to do? There's no amazingly ideal um, browser for anything. So Vivaldi, I think, is a fine choice. So we have VLC, Cheese. We have the full LibreOffice suite, including the base suite, which is good. And then there's just some extra settings and options. Now we have options here for uh, Farron. We can start up the tour again. We can do uh, feedback or report a bug. We can donate to Farron. And um, here's your welcome screen as well. I think maybe the welcome screen might be slightly different than the tour. I think I had probably misspoken earlier in the video. Uh, no, okay. I actually, this is, I did not see this one yet today. Um, so it does not boot up automatically, apparently. Um, so let's have a look now at the, um, the software management. As far as the management of software, I like the fact, maybe I'm a slightly biased, but he's using the Linux Mint Update Manager, which I actually think is one of the absolute best. We can manage kernels, we can manage the software, we can select which packages to... Uh, which packages to hold back, which packages to update. You can see we are currently running kernel 5.11. Uh, so you can actually kind of see what you have and what type of security updates they are. As far as the store is concerned, the store is also the Linux Mint software store, which does a pretty good job of separating out your repository versus your flat pack tools. So if you're updating things or installing things from here instead of the web manager, you could have actually installed Firefox directly from the repositories instead of uh, doing it from the uh, from the flat pack. Uh, or maybe, I don't know. I'll have to look into that a little bit further. So we do have Snap apps here as well. Snap support is not installed. Would you like to install it? By installing Snap support, you agree to Canonical's terms. This is actually something that he puts in here a few different places. You even have to, you get this similar uh, pop-up prompt when you try and install Firefox as well. This is an excellent thing because it gives people the idea that says, hey, there are some terms and services, so maybe I should actually go and read those. So that's really good. Um, overall, th this is why I think Farron is such a, a good, um, uh, why I think it's such a good good operating system is just so many different um, so many different uh, little things that many of us talk about, but very few distributions actually put them in. And this is why, despite there's a few design choices like the Windows 11 look, the installing the Firefox by Flatpak by default, I'm not a huge fan of those. I would not let those in any way steer me away from using Farron OS. Um, overall, this has always been a great operating system. For me, the only real downsides is I've not been liking Plasma as much as I've been using it in production on a day-to-day. -day. Um, but, eh, whatever. That's, that's the case. You do have a lot of other options, though, in Plasma. That's what it's really good at is just all sorts of different management options. So there is overall my take on Farron OS 2021.10. Overall, very good distribution. If you're looking to switch from Windows into Linux, this is one of the good logical choices. I put this up there with Mint. Uh, Zorin is another good one. I'll put it up there with MX Linux, Linux Lite. Things like these are are really good distributions. Of course, those are all more like Ubuntu slash Debian type approaches. If you want to do rolling, um, I personally use Endeavor OS for my Arch system. Arco Linux is also good, and I've used Arch Labs for a long period of time in the past as well. And additionally, Manjaro, as I mentioned, um, I'm using Manjaro Plasma because my work computer is a Raspberry Pi, and um, 
maybe who knows maybe some of the some of the quirkiness is the slowness of the raspberry pi but whatever the case is regardless there is my take Farron os is looking great uh very good iterative uh update here and so definitely give it a look if you have not already done so and as always if you are using it as your regular desktop please donate to Farron os to keep the project going that lets them know that uh, the work is appreciated and it is hard work to get these distributions going. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and we will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.